Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jake Jabarelli of Jabarelli.com, just a bunch of referral links. And I'm going to be setting up Ubuntu Server 18.0 X LTS as a continuation of my last video with that flash drive from that last video. Now there's a couple of things I want to say before we get started here. I have already set this laptop up previously with Ubuntu, that's the reason it's up on the screen already. But if you don't have one, you need at least somehow to figure out how to get into the setup functionality of the computer. There's so many different computers out there, I can't really tell you what to do for that part. I might be able to help you a little bit on the back end, contact me on my site, give you some help there. Um, I've been an IT professional for 22 years, I have a little bit of experience with it. Other than that, let's just get started with at least the part of the system setup here. Okay, so at least with this system, this is a laptop, an HP laptop that the customer gave me when he didn't win it anymore. And um, I want to boot off of the flash drive, which I have plugged in on the left side of the laptop. So I need to hit F9 on the keyboard here to do boot device options in this particular case. Now, the boot manager, a lot of computers have this. Um, I want to boot from, I don't know if you guys can read that, let me zoom in here a bit. There we go. Right up here, USB hard drive, generic flash disk. So I want to pick the USB hard drive, which I have plugged in as the thing that I, I uh, boot from, because that, that disk that we created earlier at the previous video. So, so all these options. Um, okay, I can read that. Uh, let's see. Let me zoom in here a bit. Yeah, see how it says uh, install Ubuntu server? That's what we want, the top one. That. Now I'm going to go through exactly what I will write out. I have this entire document you guys read. It'll be in the description. Tell you exactly how this boot process works. So even if you don't quite follow everything that happens on the screen, which hopefully you will, um, I'll have it all written out for you. And like I said, if you have problems, I can help you out with that as well. It's not really all that hard to do. I really want everybody to see this part here because this is the setup part where all of the uh, things that happen on the uh, installation like normally you wouldn't see this with Windows because it's all hidden in the background but with Linux they kind of want you kind of want to see what happened what happened what happened did this thing happen did this thing happen and how is it uh, loading all the all the drivers and all the functionality for the system um, most of the time ignore this but I mean once you build a couple of computers you kind of get used to the look of this so, all right, so this is the, set, the general setup. And with even with Windows operating system setup, you get the same stuff. What's your what's your language? Well, this is English, hit enter. All right, uh, what kind of keyboard layout do you want? Well, I'll just go with the standard. I don't really care if it's anything, hit enter again. At the bottom, there's a little button that says done. Yes, we want to install Ubuntu. There's a couple other options, but we're installing Ubuntu on the, in, in this case. So we hit enter. Now, in this case, this is the network stuff. Um, a lot of people use Wi-Fi. Personally, I prefer hard lines. It's just faster, more reliable. And so it says, ENO1, Ethernet, or ETH, Ethernet, and it gives me my IP address in, internally. Uh, so I'm gonna say, enter for done. Pick that up. Don't care about proxies. We're not setting up anything weird here. Done again. Also, mirror address. I'll just, just take whatever it gives you. Done again. All right, so in this case, this disk is really tiny. It's like 60 gigs. It's a solid state. It's one of the old ones I had. This is the reason I say in the in the description, a computer you don't care about, because trying to set up Ubuntu is not impossible to set up when you already have another operating system running, but it's just easier not to. So I say pick up stick PC, something with you know 32, maybe 64 gigs of space, and just use the whole disk. You're not going to use the whole disk because you won't need that much room. But this is the easy way. So that, that's the name of the drive. I say yes. You wanted to do it this way? Yeah, just pick the default. Um, are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I do. And now I'm going to put my name, Jake. Let's spell it right here, Jake. Oh, that's a four. Uh, my server name is open. Oh, that's right. No caps. Uh, STF, open smartphone test form. Uh, my username again, Jake. And my password I'm going to make really simple because I don't want to have to think about what it is. That you're using this in-house, it does not matter. No one's going to see this on the internet. We're not worried about that part. So just pick a password that works. Hit done. 
Um, I'm personally going to install uh, OpenSSH server. You don't have to. So my view is just moving around on the screen since there's no mouse to, to do anything with. You hit the tab button. Tab, 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 and it changes it. So tab to done, hit done. Now we need this software. We need Docker. That's what we're going to be using. Hit spacebar to select something. So I picked Docker, went down to the Docker line, hit the spacebar to put a little asterisk next to it. And then I hit tab again to move down to done, hit enter, and it starts uh, setting up. Now remember I already have my network set up, so it's automatically gonna grab all the things and install them. I'm gonna pause while it does this. Okay, so now it got all the way down to the end here. All the things are set up and configured and all the extra stuff I asked it to install, the Docker and the open SSH. And at the bottom it says reboot now. Reboot we go. I'm just gonna finish installing all the little nitpickety things that need to be set up. You see a lot of green, that's good. Green's good. You see red, it's fine. Probably it'll get past it. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions about anything that you don't understand or you get stuck on something, just uh, message me and I'm sure I can help you out. Alright, now um, it'll get a lot of more uh, commentary stuff here on the screen. When you're done, fine, you can just hit enter a couple times and it'll bring up the, the um, login. You may remember this if you've ever used a computer that had this kind of interface on it. Um, Jake, log it in, log it in. And there we are. Okay, so a um, couple of points after we're logged in here is uh, remember this IP address. This is my internal IP address. Anybody who uses Google Wi Fi will recognize 192.168.86 because that's what Google uses. Could be 84, could be 85, but 86 is common enough. And it gave me a last IP of 213. You want to remember that because it's going to be used later on. I'm going to do that in another video. Ta-ta for now.